Good morning, everyone. And uh, I'm very glad that I get the opportunity to say something more about smart ICT. Um, we heard yesterday in the plenary session that finally water and food security is on the political agenda. So that's good. And uh, we all know that we have to help farmers producing more food with less water, and nobody disagrees. But we have to help them. It's really quite unfair to expect from farmers that suddenly they become very productive and very efficient with water. Uh, so if we don't improve the productivity at the field scale during the growing season, then we are too late. So we really have to give instructions to the farmer on how to save water, when to irrigate, when just give that fertilizer when it's needed. And only then, I believe, we can expect productivity. Otherwise, forget it. You know, it will only be talking on conferences. So, <laughs> I divide my talk in two parts. And the first part is more on the technology. And actually, my name is not on the program. Uh, my colleague, Patrick Sheridan, was expected to give that presentation. Uh, but he was unfortunately not able to attend Stockholm Water Week, so I'm, I'm replacing him. Um, so the first part is on the technology, and the second part will be more on the business model, on how to really implement it in a sustainable way. So what we really have here is uh, the tools, so it's part of a project funded by IFAT, and we are um, experimenting with smart ICT in Egypt, Sudan, Ethiopia, and Mali. And the project is just, say, in its first year, so I have not yet very exciting results. We're still in the progress of you know, connecting with the people in the field. And we have just started our services in Egypt. It's too early to draw any, any sound conclusions, but at least I can inform you about the ideas we have. And this white box is the tool development. So here we um, basically collect data from satellites. Um, it is all satellite-based. Um, systems. We use about 10 different satellites to get all the pictures and then we convert the raw satellite into smart pixels. And so basically if you collect a satellite image you have dumb pixels. You know, you get a color map. But we convert it into smart pixels which gives you information on millimeters, kilograms and things like that. Then we have to run this as an operational service because we really would like to have a real-time assistance to the farmers. So we must have an operational system uh, where we compute all this data and then it has to be disseminated through the, uh, towards the end user. And I come to that later. So this is the, typically the setup of the IFAT project uh, and it's done together with, with IMI. Um, and uh, DLV plant. And here in the green boxes you see the um, collection uh, of the data and the field boundaries needs to be defined because we would like to give field specific information to the farmer. We don't want to give him or her a complete region but we want to give very specific information of the fields of interest. Um, we also need um, data from, from weather stations. Here are the different satellite data and we do the data processing. And then actually the dissemination takes place um, either through the internet and it goes to a website with a map viewer. So it means that all kind of stakeholders can have a look on this website, what is going on. But many people uh, in these countries do not have a website so you also have to give very simple messages to the cell phones. And that only is possible if you have a very close collaboration with value-adding partners. Uh, so VAPS. 
Without a value-added partner in these countries, it's very difficult to set up a system in a sustainable way. This is the study area that we are talking about. So it is the western part of the, of the delta. And what is very nice about this is that it, ha it includes um, commercial farms, the big farms with 100 to 1,000 hectares each. And also you have in the traditional old lands in the delta, you have the very small farms. And I will come back later also to that because I think in a way also the stronger farmers can help to really launch such kind of system in a sustainable way. So this is the kind of uh, data collection that, uh, that we do. So we, have, uh, we need to have some information from the ground on weather data. So we use routine weather stations that are already installed and operational, just a standard network. Um, the farmers or their advisors, they have to identify what type of crop they have. We have a soil map. Um, the type of irrigation, they have to specify the dates of sowing and harvesting, but most importantly, the digital boundaries. Uh, and then also we do all kind of calculations. So we use the satellite um, as the main data source for calculations on soil moisture and crop yield and evapotranspiration. Uh, but of course, it is good to work together with local partners that have a lot of expertise and that can also do some of this validation work. So we work with institute like SWERI um, that also have um, field experiments on the ground and that can check some of these calculations. This uh, is the website that you can visit and um, the one on Smart ICT Africa gives you a general background on the type of information we calculate from images and that can be disseminated. And if you own a piece of land in Egypt, then here is your big chance because you can go to this uh, website, fieldlook.com.egypt. You can sign your own field and you can see how much was grown yesterday and how much water was used yesterday and things like that. So it is not entirely new. We have been doing this also in the Netherlands and Canada and Spain and South Africa. So, and we see the number of areas very fastly increasing because the system has uh, demonstrated that farmers get more profit. Uh, so as long as they get more profit, yeah, then they are ready to pay for the service. If, you know, if, if it's not helpful to them, then it's nice ICT and it will die within a few years. It's very simple. So we have two different ways to get the information towards the farmer. So it can be uh, on demand. So a certain farmer, um, he has a certain uh, ID. He can, uh, lock, he can make a request and then it goes to a server and then that server is doing some calculations after checking whether all the required information is available, um, like the, the field name, the ID, and the mobile number, and we can do a real-time uh, calculation, uh, and then uh, an advice can be given to the farmer. So then it's much more upon request, and you leave the demand for data a bit more to the end user. And in fact, I should say that the, the IFAT objectives of this three-year project is really to find out what do they want. How often do they want it and how do they want to get the information. Um, it's really about how to best communicate and how to best explore ICT technology for improving land and water productivity. The project is definitely not about we will increase water productivity by 10%. That's not the case. We just want to find out what one does the farmer want to know. We also have an, uh, a push information um, um, to help farmers um, with answering certain questions so that we send an SMS message anyway, whether he likes it or not. Uh, here, there is an on-off button, so if we send the messages too often, they always can switch it off. Uh, but 
you know, this is typically information like, hey, watch out. Your crop now is in a flowering stage. Now you should not have any water deficit. So irrigate because we see that your moisture is a little bit low, right? Or if you talk about spate irrigation, because one of the state um, uh, case studies will be in the GASH irrigation scheme, it's about watch out the wave of floods is coming. So be ready, you know, you have to get your spate irrigation in the next one and or two days. So these are typically kind of messages we, we could predefine and then and then send it to, to the farmers. This is an, uh, an, uh, a snapshot of the operational website. Um, so what is very important that a farmer says this is a farmer or a block manager you know like you know, you have maybe a bigger farm with different uh, blocks of citrus or bananas, and you want to have the information of only this part of interest. So then you have to give the four corner coordinates, and then it calculates here for all the different fields um, uh, the, the situation in, in that field. And the way we have setting up this system is that at the one hand you have a data uh, provision, on the other hand also you have an application. So for instance here, the bought application is an irrigation planner. So someone um, makes an application on the basis of this data. Now, the more higher level of ICT to um, bring across this information is, is really the smartphone. And you can think about smartphone being very far away, but then I invite you to visit India uh, and you see you will see many farmers already with a smartphone. You know, they don't want to have that small, stupid, small Sony Ericsson. They want to have a nice display, you know, and they show it to you that, that they have one. So this is really going very fast. So don't think this is a European thing. It's absolutely a thing from South America and Africa and Asia. And I see a lot of proud of you know, farmers and their advisors having such kind of equipment. A few examples to, to show you what I'm talking about. So, for instance, this is an, uh, one of the applications that you can get either on your phone, smartphone or on a web. And this is an, uh, an illustration of uh, crop water stress. So here you can see the variation in time of water stress. If there's no stress, then it's this. And this is for every week you get an, like a total water stress. So here you can see that's really very high. Apparently here either it was rain or irrigation uh, and then it's low again. This dot gives you the average of your field. But you get also the spatial variability within the field. Uh, so here is the, the, the scale. So um, the areas here in purple, they have a huge water deficit. And the ones here in red and yellow, you know, they have no water deficit. So it can really even help to more locally provide water. Another example, you can just give different fields and you can say which one is in the red area, which is really needs water and the green ones are fine. It's very easy to understand. Yeah. Um, so you can give graphs, you can give pictures and things like that. Uh, so... Um, it, it, it really only works if, if, you, if, you have, if you have good data. I mean, you can send also standard weather data to, to smartphones and so on, but that is also something you can maybe get access to through other media. Uh, but um, if you have detailed information on the, the water deficit or production, then farmers getting more excited. So that's the technical part. But the theme today is also much more like, you know, how, how can this get its own life? How can we make this mature so that after the funding, in this case from IFA, the things continue? Uh, and uh, that's a central theme of, of this workshop, uh, that we should not uh, do a standard donor fueling all the time and then stop after the project. And to have a little bit more discussion on how to get that sustainable, um, um, I think it is important to realize the various stakeholders. So you need one who provides the information, and I'm representing that part of the graph. But it will never work if you do not have value-added partners in these countries. So you need 
a partner who can make an irrigation product. Um, in, I can even think about having very specific information on land degradation, and then you need to have an added partner in Tigray, right? Uh, and so on. So you have to work on various applications, uh, which always needs to be made in the local context. You, know, you have to understand what the questions are and what the situation is. And that must create value. If that is not creating value, yeah, then again, it's just nice playing with ICT technologies, but you know, it will only be for the duration of the project. So this helps you to give you a little bit of idea on who are these value-added partners. So these are typically all kind of um, organizations and entities that already provide um, data and advice to farmers uh, and, and they are the ones that should embrace spatial data and make the apps on the smartphone. And it can be easily done through an app store. And so you can say, look, um, here is the data, but do you want an application from this firm? Okay, you have to pay 400 for, uh, euro per hectare, per season extra. You want to have and uh, an, an, a special soil sampling to do more measurements of your nutrients, then it's 57 euros per field. Um, you want to have um, specific, uh, area-specific applications of nutrients, you know, and, and so on. So that, that's the model we have. We want to have app stores with applications. And then we have the end users. So, and I come to back that in a minute because these end users are not only the farmers but it's also the whole agribusiness chain and they also have high interest in 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 getting a better productivity and that is actually displayed on on this on this slide so it's all about the crop and we want to help the farmer in producing more but the farmer works together with the supply chain so here you have the industry that makes uh, the chemicals to protect your crop or to make the fertilizers uh, and also they can have benefits um, if um, their product is sold to this farm and if this farm is having a higher productivity. And also after the harvest, you know, you have um, a different group of people who would like to know how much is the harvest um, do we have enough storage facilities? So they also um, have benefits if there is information. So if, if this is ever going to work, you know, it has to be used by millions of people. Then you can make it affordable. Uh, and uh, I always use this example of navigation in cars, which became a kind of you know, common thing. But the only reason is that you know, many people are using it. So, it's not about one killer application, but it's really about multiple fishes. You know, we really have to think about various type of applications within the whole agricultural chain. So for instance, um, a farmer, he can have an, an application for <coughs> irrigating his land how much water, when, and so on. And you can say, he knows that. Well, yes, he knows that. But we also know that the water productivity is really quite low. And we also know from research and science ways to improve that water productivity. Say, a lot of cereal crops have a water productivity of 0 0.5 kilogram per cubic meter. And we also know that we can easily get that to 1 or 1.5 kilogram per cubic meter. But then we have to tell the farmer exactly when and how much to irrigate. So you can think about different applications. Um, also for drainage, for those areas with more rainfall and you know, fertilizers and pesticides. And also for harvest planning, when do you have to cut that corn? You know, you just have to cut the corn when it has the right protein content and the right moisture content. So if we have that information, we can send that to farmers. But also this industry around farmers. So the people providing loans and microcredits, they also are eager to help the farmer and say, look, you can have, you can have this microcredit or you can have this loan, 
But then, you know, you should use this application so that, um, you know, you, you have a higher chance on a more positive return. Commodity traders are very eager, you know, how much coffee do we get this year? What will be the harvest of rice? What is the impact of all this drought in the U.S.? You know, crop insurance, huh? they, and again, they have a big interest in to working together with a farmer on an, 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 an kind of um, insurance system that that is fair, that's open, and is based on real damage of the crop. And it could be weather index based or based on the real crop damage and, and so on. Now, I'm not going to discuss all of them, but you know, the point I want to make is that if we think about a more sustainable business model, then using smart ICT should not only be paid by the farm. So we have that information here. We can send it out to the farm, and the farm is deep pockets and enough bucks, you know, they, they can buy this application. There's no problem. But for a small holder, that may be, you know, very difficult. So I think that information can also be sent to these people who have all kind of inputs into the cropping system. Like, you buy your bag of fertilizer from Syngenta, uh, but then you get the app for free. Uh, or you want to buy a new nice uh, Massey Ferguson, but then you know you get that thing for free, and so on. And the same holds true, you know, for these other people. So they can they can help also uh, to to really um, use this uh, information systems, and then either provide it for free or against a small share in the costs, uh, because. The picture um, I took from Miriam is that, see, also in the mobile telecom, you know, it's a very complex relationship. It's all kind of um, people and industries involved. And, you know, they also have benefits if that consumer is using I ICT information. So um, they should also pay part of the bill. So the business models um, could really be based on intermediaries. Uh, in, in interested in agriculture. It goes beyond the farmer. I think that is one of the main messages I, I want to give today. Uh, and, and for instance, they can buy the licenses and they can uh, make them available against a reduced price so that at least the farmer clients start using it. And we have some experience not so much from the smartphone, but from the viewers in, in different countries. We have about 4,000 farmers who use it. And they really like to pay for it because either they reduce their costs, like le buying less fertilizers, or they have a higher yield. So uh, I think we can always ask for more fuel, but I think the more sustainable solution is um, to organize it from the business chain and become more self-sufficient. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Wim, for your, uh, well, I think very interesting and very passionate uh, uh, presentation. Um, I'm going to look in the room and I see already a hand. Uh, I would like to give that to uh, Work, please introduce yourself and to Wim, please repeat the question. Yeah. I, I'm going to be coming to the long uh, uh, In uh, so is a round by the company in Japan, and uh, I'm very interested in your presentation. And thank you for uh, this uh, information. Uh, this presentation. Uh, I'm much interested in you. how often can you su supply your information to the farmer? Example as uh, uh, with uh, information, so it depends on the so how to say fruits or uh, crops. Yeah. Some crops need uh, some frequent information. Yeah. And, uh, the other one is uh, how to say long term information is enough. Sure. So uh, my question is uh, how often you can supply the useful information to farmers, and uh, the other one is uh, this kind of the uh, business is spreading in advanced area or uh, rural places or other, uh, emerging yeah. markets. Okay. 
So there are two questions. So the first question is, how often do you provide this information to the farmer? Uh, and the second question is, you know, what kind of, in what kind of you know, economies could you roll out such kind of system? Um, on the first question, on the frequency, um, technically speaking, we can do it daily. Because, you know, we are using about 10 satellites, but there are about 30 different satellites. And if you put them together, you have a daily coverage for every place on Earth. So with a pixel size of 20 meters. So every 20 by 20 meter could be measured every day. Um, is that necessary? I, I'm not sure. I mean, the farmers we are working with, they say, look, one time per week is sufficient. Um, which, which maybe also is not tr exactly true because, you know, if you have a very high value crop, you know, and, and there are also very specific moments in every crop that it has a, a certain phenological stage that where the crop needs more attention. So I can even imagine that in certain, you know, fruit crops, you would like to have daily information for a certain period, maybe the other part, you know, less frequent uh, and so on. So yeah, we are learning, we are learning and finding out. Uh, most of the farmers say once a week is sufficient, but I know, for instance, in India, where uh, Reuters is having a very nice experiment with farmers, and they give the information four times per day <laughs> to the farmer. Uh, and that, that, I think, is an overkill, and that is a little bit too much. It is one euro, it is a, basically one euro per hectare per season. Okay. And you know, we have started to roll out these systems in Europe and Canada and, and, and South Africa. And very interestingly enough, IFAD came like, hey, why don't you do that in Africa? You know, and, uh, and that's how the project started. So, and I think the timing is right. It's maybe now a little early, but I think within a few years, when such kind of project is finished, you know, Africa is totally ready to receive this kind of information. It's coming, it's coming, and it's the only way to achieve improvement. Otherwise, I really believe that all this pep talk about water productivity improvement is purely an, an academic exercise. We have to help the farmers and the farmer consultants, you know, during the season. shown some regions where you cover also Egypt, where this resource management is maybe not efficiently there. So what do you do? What would be your recommendation in respect to what do we do if the resource at ad hoc is not available? Or do you just assume the farmer would buy the, the app if mm -hmm. he knows what he's doing, so if okay. he has the water available? And the second question would be more for my concern on the data management. Um, how do you know what to say? How do you know the crop needs water, mm -hmm. or the crop needs fertilizer, or when does it need it? On what grounds is your information based? Okay, maybe two. Okay, so the one question is related to, um, you know, what what is the source of the data, so so that you can give in real time advice. Uh, and the other question is much more related to um, what, are the, what are the requirements, the local requirements, in order to implement such kind of system. Um, see, all the data is based on satellite measurements. Um, I believe in unique measurements. Um, otherwise, you cannot give an advice. Okay? So you cannot, say, give an impression on a whole region and say, hey, the whole region is dry, you should do this and that. So you have to have very specific measurements. Such kind of system will not work if you have no satellite data. Okay? And the satellite data um, is used to calculate, for instance, the nitrogen level in the leaves. Not as a percentage, but in kilograms. So we calculate every day the kilogram of nitrogen in the leaves. Okay? Then, um, I do not want to give that advice because the situation 
and the practices in using nitrogen in Egypt and Ethiopia can be completely different. That is why in my graphs, I show that we always work with a value-added partner. They are from the countries. They know that you know, the best yield of sorghum in Tigray is with so much nitrogen, with two or three applications and things like that. So local, local experience is used to give the final advice. Then your question on, you know, you need a certain infrastructure present, for instance, to irrigate, which is absolutely true, but it goes beyond irrigation. And so this is also for rain-fed farming. This is, you know, for farmland in general. So, for instance, um, if I see a suddenly a, a certain change in the biomass production during the year, which I cannot explain by weather, then I have this alarm bell. You know, so we make software that, that says, hey, ping, ping, you know, something is wrong. Your weather is excellent, but your crop is really very quickly um, uh, suffering. There is a stunted development. Please check your field. So, you know, it's not always that you need an irrigation pump or so to make such kind of system uh, interesting. Thank you very much. Uh, one question, uh, please. Uh, maybe I would like to scale up uh, her question uh, because the experience which we have in Africa is based on the quality of that. And uh, I'm working with the Coke model. I don't know if you know it. It's quite a good model which you can estimate evaporation translation from different kind of crops and you can estimate the water uptake from different kind of uh, vegetation crop. So I'm just uh, uh, enthusiastic to know, uh, uh, are you thinking about to understand the quality of your data before you process them and before you provide the advice to farmers? Sure. So the question is, um, how, uh, you know, how do you really you model these, these systems and is the quality of the data sufficient? And I must say, usually when I give a presentation, it's about that. So I did 25 years of research on how to convert, say, this pixel information into this quantified data. So instead of using a crop growth model, you know, that you typically apply on a field or on an average field in a region, we apply it on every pixel. So we do crop yield modeling on a week by week, day by day, week by week, season by season basis for every 20 meter by 20 meter. You know? And the whole evapotranspiration, for instance, is, is part of that. So I don't know whether you know about Seaball model. But that's, okay, that's the world standard model for evapotranspiration that is used um, as the underlying um, mechanistic tool to make these calculations feasible. Yes, otherwise I cannot display all that data, you know. A satellite will not tell me the, the, the crop water needs and the crop evapotranspiration. So it's only possible after having done all these 25 years of research. Thank you. 